Our mission is to become successful with Brighton, doing it the Brighton way. Make sure we never break the transfer record again. No thanks to Michael Edwards, the bloody fraud. I mean, look at who he suggests when I ask for a defensive winger. Stuart Dallas. He's 32, Michael, and nowhere near ready for the Champions League. Oh yeah, we finished in third place last season and qualified for the Champions League. And 18-year-old Evan Ferguson scored 43 goals in total. Our ugly Christmas tree bleached. tactic is working really well for us. Levi Corwell will leave the club and go back to Chelsea after his loan spell. And we had to sort out Caicedo's contract that he wants where unfortunately we can't get rid of the minimum fee release clause. I was also alarmed by my team report. Weaknesses include the goalkeeper and the fact that nobody wants to work hard. And our scout report was full of trash. So I'd need to look for myself for future additions. Some weird transfers happened elsewhere though. Ilkay Gundogan moved from City to Liverpool for 20 million and Kyle Walker-Peters from relegated Southampton to West Brom. I did check and they are coming into the Premier League as champions. I was shocked to see teams throw £5 million at us for terrible players in our squad and £5 million for our backup striker who was very unhappy so is moving to Werder Bremen. I was also shocked to see more transfers in the Premier League with Newcastle signing Rafael Liao from AC Milan in the second season without any Champions League football for £57 million up front and only £70 million in total. We signed somebody new though. Devon Wrench from Ajax for just £10.25 million. A fantastic young defender who fills so many positions for us. A really good squad player. Swiftly followed by a young centre-back from Brazil, Jair, for just £3.5 million. Maybe one for the future or just for profit. But the best signing so far for us was David Pereira da Costa from Lons. We don't necessarily need an attacking midfielder, but he was way too good to turn down for only £15.25 million. And on the same day, he dislocated his shoulder playing for Portugal and is out for two to three months. We still have roughly £20 million left so we could be bringing in more signings soon. Van Heck is back from his long spell at West Brom and I think he could be a good first team player for us. We sat Evan Ferguson down and got him to sign a new contract with no release clause included for another five years. But we did say goodbye to Adam Webster who he shipped off for nearly £10 million. This is only goodbye for now. First game of the season is here against West Ham. And we got an early penalty and World Cup winner McAllister stepped up and somehow puts He's it bloody past. missed it. But I think it's fair to say that he redeemed himself scoring just two minutes later and giving us the lead. And in the second half when the ball dropped to him again, another fantastic finish. We were missing Caicedo, March and Acosta and yet Ferguson still opened the scoring at Stamford Bridge. Chilwell did put Chelsea back level before half time, but a hopeful ball found Zakiri who walked through like he was invisible and dinked the goalkeeper but in the 89th minute Kukurea put in an unbelievable cross for Horta to end the game at 2-2. The worst part of it is that Evan Ferguson picked up an injury and will miss some upcoming games right before the derby against Palace at home as well. A positive though is how much Alex Scott has developed in the last year. I went to Michael's office again to see if he had any striker suggestions and he gave us three very questionable options including Gomez who had offers from Man United and Inter Milan already but I found a player who would be a great option for that striker hole that we are missing. For now though, with Ferguson's injury, Zakiri takes his spot after his goal in the last match. And with many players now missing, Palace was probably the worst team for us to face as they gave them the lead in the first half and Zaha finished us off in the second in the 75th minute. Anyway, moving on, let me introduce you to our new striker, Marcus Leonardo, a wonderful 20-year-old striker who will give us so much squad depth now for two games a week in Europe and in the league rotating with Ferguson. And for just £14.5 million too, I very quickly changed the side for the next match against Brentford, bringing in Caicedo, Wrench and Marcus Leonardo. But we only picked up a draw. But it's now time to find out our Champions League group. An exciting moment for Brighton and Hove Albion. And of course, we are in the fourth pot for the draw, so we'll be breezing through the draw while we see which group we are in. Now, we couldn't be in Group A because of Liverpool. We avoided Group B with Real Madrid, and we are drafted into Group C with Porto, Inter Milan, and Copenhagen. Overall, I think that I am happy, and we avoided the group of death with Bayern Munich and Barcelona. Failure to prepare is preparing to fail, though, and I'm even setting out my training sessions for the two match weeks. After beating Norwich comfortably, we lost to Liverpool. 
Liverpool and I blame the goalkeeper. And it was into our Champions League game against Copenhagen and Evan Ferguson is the man to score our first goal in the competition. There were a lot of standout performances in this match though. Kefren Turan was outstanding, breaking up play and even getting an assist. Evan Ferguson ended the night with a hat-trick on his Champions League debut. We did let Copenhagen back into the match though and even gave a penalty away in the dying seconds of the match but we still won 3-2. Marcus Leonardo got his first goal for the club, unintentionally might I add, off of Turam's shot against Fulham. In a game that we lost 3-2, which was the start of a bad run of three games with two losses to Man United at home, before travelling to Italy and beating into Milan 1-0, which was a much better result than what we got facing Porto in Portugal. We hammered them really, we had 26 shots and 10 on target, but they still went away with a 3-2 win taking all three points. But that came in between a three game winning streak in the league. And Marcus Leonardo has found the net twice in that run as well. We are already nine points behind top of the league and five points from the top four. But hey, we are top it. of our Champions League group. Well, up until we drew with Porto. And then lost to Inter Milan at home in the 90th minute. We are a little bit inconsistent in the league, but picking up more wins than anything else and getting lucky. But in our final Champions League group match, we put in a five-star performance, scoring five goals. Da Costa got the opener on the half-hour mark and the floodgates opened in the second half. Marcus Leonardo was having a great time, scoring his first hat-trick in Europe on the biggest stage of all, as well as Alex Scott netting the fifth and final goal. It still was another to send us through to the knockouts but we had the Europa League instead where we will face young boys in the knockout playoff match. Unfortunately league results started to get worse as well. It was a strange month as we lost to City 1-0 in an unlucky fashion. Got beat for the third time already this season by 10-man Man United from a 95th minute Jadon Sancho hat-trick. Whilst beating Arsenal 1-0 in a very lucky way you might say and then beating Tottenham 3-2 thanks to a 91st minute winner. And sometimes may be good, sometimes Maybe she. Guessing where we would be in the league could be anywhere, but we are seventh for now. There are those back-to-back -back draws again. It is January, and I have accepted a bid for Velma. So guess who we need to speak to about a replacement? And I swear to God, he better not suggest Mings again. Is he serious? Eric Dyer. Really, Michael? The tutor option is not a bad one in all honesty, but still. Anyway, Spurs bad us. I did not see that coming. Onto the Chelsea match then instead, and Evan Ferguson scores in the first minute. Lovely. But no, Kai Havertz brings Chelsea level, but a corner to the back post is smashed in by Van Eck, and we take all three points. I decided not to sign anybody, by the way. Michael's fault. Wait a minute. The errors are Arsenal. What the hell happened to Arteta? He's unemployed. Oh, Mikel. I wonder if he's any better at a director of football role. Anyway, Evan Ferguson is at it again, scoring this outrageous header just 22 seconds in. He also scored another in this 6-2 first leg win against Young Boys. Into the quarterfinals of the FA Cup as well with this win, but look at this. Man City visited the Amex and scored within six minutes. On to the second half, and that is Steven Alzate in one of his first games for the club in two seasons. And he was then involved in the next four goals as well. And no, they weren't own goals. Four Brighton goals. We just beat Man City, who are champions, remember? 5-1, and Steven Alzate scored two, assisted two, and got man of the match. Putting us in great stead with Sporting coming up soon in Europa League. Shouldn't have worried. Three 5-1 wins in a row with three hat-tricks from Ferguson and Marcus Leonardo. Alzate went from hero to zero rather fast. Red card. And City got their revenge too, knocking us out of the FA Cup. But I genuinely fancy our chances in the Europa League, you know. But before we faced Pilsen, we went and beat a very good Newcastle team with a strike force of Rafael Leal and Alexander Izak. And after scoring two goals in the first seven minutes, it was those two who combined to pull one back, but we held on to the win. And then that's three rounds where we were up in the first leg by four goals. But we cannot shake off those losses we were waltzing through last season. We are really Really struggling down in eighth place. And we've got a big team in the semi final of the Europa League, too, pulling AC Milan. Before that, however, two more 5 1 wins, this time in the league, which is definitely needed. Still outside of those European spots, though. First leg at the San Siro, huge semi final, but Milan take a very early lead. Sonny March, though, picks up the ball wide and finds the head of Evan Ferguson, and it's level. Four minutes later, we find Van Heck at the back post again, 2 1. Sonny March then beats the Milan player. 
to the loose ball from the clearance off the corner, takes it wide, but goes all the way, and it's 3-1. Well, until Tonali made it 3-2. And two minutes later, we are level again. But I thought a draw at the San Siro would be a fair result, and we couldn't clear our lines. And Di Catalere gave Milan the advantage into the second leg. Which I'm going to be crawling and have to come back for in the next episode, including the derby match at the start against Crystal Palace.